Let's take a look at the U.S. Army Special Forces Qualification Course and discuss how hard it is and what to expect. The U.S. Army Special Forces Qualification Course, or the Q Course for short, is the training program or training pipeline that all candidates must endure to become a fully qualified Special Forces soldier and earn the famous and coveted Green Beret. Let's talk about phases and timeline with an emphasis on physical fitness standards, the suck factor, sleep and food deprivation, and my overall impressions. The Q course consists of Special Forces selection and assessment, followed by six phases of training. The SF orientation course, the MOS phase and SEER, basic airborne refresher, tactical skills, Robin Sage, and language training. And some graduates go to advanced skills training before going to a Special Forces Operational Detachment Alpha, or an A-team. Although the names and phase numbers are changed every few years, the overall training pipeline remains relatively consistent. I even called the Special Operations Recruiting Battalion to confirm that these phases are the current practice. Let's look at these phases in greater detail, starting with SFAS. Special Forces Assessment and Selection, or Selection for short, is a 24-day test to ensure that you're a good investment. They want to know that you're strong enough and fast enough to meet the minimum fitness standards. They want to know that you aren't going to quit when the going gets tough. They want to know that you work and play well in a team and are committed to giving 100% all of the time. The Q course is mostly at Camp McCall, a small Special Forces training facility 45 minutes outside of Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Physical Fitness Standards The cadre don't announce what the physical standards are at selection. They just encourage you to give 100%. When I arrived, I could do 18 pull-ups, 82 perfect sit-ups in 2 minutes, 82 perfect push-ups in 2 minutes, run a 630 mile, and ruck all day long. Compared to my peers, I felt like my overall physical fitness level was about average. So let's say these should be the minimum physical standards. Rucks are weighed and they must be 45 pounds before any event. You also do ruck marches and land nav courses for 8 hours straight or more. So get your feet and your shoulders used to wearing a ruck. Don't even think about showing up unprepared. As far as the suck factor goes, I don't want to give away too much about the Q course. I believe that part of the training is enduring the emotional stress of not knowing what to expect and not knowing what is next. But I will say that there's a high suck factor at selection. They don't yell at you unless you absolutely deserve it. They don't give you stupid harassment, again, unless you deserve it. They just leave you alone, and this plays with your mind. For example, you might get a message to have your 45-pound rucksack ready for a ruck march at 3 a.m. Then they give you a safety brief and they tell you to do the best that you can. You follow the cones and the signs, but you don't know if you're going to go 5 miles or 15, so you got to give your best. You can't hold back. Sleep deprivation and food. I remember eating quickly and quietly, but enough during selection. And of course we ate a lot of MREs. The goal isn't to starve you. The goal of selection is to see how committed you are. You will have some sleep deprivation. The cadre absolutely controls when you sleep and when you don't. Sometimes we would do some hard training or land navigation all night. Only take a 15 minute break before heading out to do some log PT. I was continuously exhausted, but for the most part, I didn't constantly walk around in a sleep deprived drunken stupor like I did at ranger school. My overall impression is that selection is a great test of your commitment. One of the biggest benefits of selection is that it gets rid of the trash talkers and the mentally weak. This might sound harsh to say, but it's true. You wouldn't want to have them on your special forces team. My bunkmate, for example, talked a big game, but he was all talk. I returned from a ruck event one morning to find that he had packed up all of his stuff and left. Another guy quit, but he left a message that his unit called him back and that he had to leave selection immediately. I mean, this is absurd. The Q course is hard. There's no shame in admitting that it's just not for you. But there is, however, no reason to lie about why you quit. 
And yet, most of the knuckleheads who quit selection always have an amazing excuse. I want to remind everyone that selection is the easiest phase of the Q course. All you have to do is land navigate, ruck, run, climb obstacle courses, and endure some strenuous physical challenges. You simply do what you're told and you put out. You give 100% and then some. Once you're selected, you begin the Q course, starting with Phase 1, Special Forces Orientation. This is a week of in-processing. Expect to receive some courses, ensure your paperwork straight, and get prepared for your MOS and SEER training. I highly recommend showing up to the Q course in amazing shape. Phase 2 is the 13-week MOS training in SEER school. Let's start with MOS, or Military Occupational Specialty. The MOS phase is where medics learn anatomy and medical trauma. Engineers learn how to build and blow stuff up. Weapons sergeants learn how to employ every weapon you can dream of. And commo guys learn how to communicate with sophisticated computers and radio devices. Officers learn how to plan. Physical fitness standards. While in garrison, you will have hard physical training or combatives training every single morning before breakfast. When you're in the field, you do your mission. This is the first phase where sometimes you get your weekends free. The first few weekends, all I did was sleep and eat. After I normalized, I was able to have a more consistent schedule and enjoy some free time in the evenings and on the weekend. The suck factor depends on what you're learning. If you're in the field, you're patrolling. Security is still rule number one, but in garrison, it's up to you. If you get uppity with one of your instructors, he's going to wreck you. If you do something wrong, you're going to get kicked out or you're going to get smoked. Now is not the time to let your guard down. My overall impression of this MOS phase is that it's amazing training. I was so impressed with the caliber of my training and everything that they taught us. This is absolutely where you learn to be special. The next step is SEER, Survival, Evasion, Resistance, and Escape Training. It's also taught out at Camp McCall. I've already made a video which specifically details this course, but to summarize it, this is where you learn how to survive off the land, how to evade capture by the enemy, how to resist the enemy if you're ever captured, and ways to escape captivity. Because of the delicate and secret nature of this training, I always like to be ambiguous about the specifics of SEER school, but I will say that it's some of the best training I ever had. As far as physical fitness, you don't get a lot of equipment, so don't worry, you don't have to carry a lot of weight. As far as harassment, the SEER cadre are amazingly professional. It was a pleasure to learn from such competent experts. Expect to get smoked only if you deserve it. And finally, let's move on to food and sleep. In garrison at SEER school, I think we averaged about six hours of sleep, but in the field, it depended on your tactical situation, sometimes none. As far as food goes, you get to eat plenty in garrison, but when you're on your field training exercise, you get to eat as much as you can find in the forest. Let's move on to phase three, prep and basic airborne refresher or bar. This is a one week training phase to ensure that everyone is ready for small unit tactical training and actively on jump status. Let's move on to what I consider the hardest phase of the Q course, Phase 4, Tactical Skills. Tactical Skills is six weeks of mastering how to patrol as a squad and platoon. Because SF guys will likely teach some variation of small unit tactics to allies and partners all around the world, it is essential that you master basic infantry tactics like the defense, raid, and ambush. Here is where you will learn that security is always rule number one. Here is where you do advanced combatives training. Here is where you learn tactics and urban combat. The physical standards of small unit tactics are much higher than selection. The rucks are heavier. You don't just carry them for an eight hour land nav course. You carry them all day for several days during a patrolling mission. While the cadre during small unit tactics phase are there to train you, they will smoke you and ruin your day if you do something stupid or negligent. So for this reason, the suck factor is way higher for SUT than selection. And then you have all of the environmental factors that are associated with combat patrols. 
You don't set up your patrol base in a beautiful campsite with an amazing view of the Appalachian Mountains. You sleep in the swamp because your enemy is not going to go there. You are constantly wet and dirty. I specifically remember the first time I got my feet wet while crossing a stream at Selection. To be honest, I was hesitant. I didn't want to make that first step and I didn't like it when I did. Six months later, I didn't even slow down before crossing a stream or swimming across a nasty swamp. I wore the same clothes for a week, wet or dry, winter or summer, it didn't matter. You toughen up or you quit. Let's move on to sleep and food deprivation. In garrison, you get sufficient sleep and plenty of food, but in the field, food and sleep were all on you. If you slept too much at the patrol base, then you get killed or you miss your target. This gets you kicked out of the Q course. But if you pack too much and your ruck is too heavy, then you're miserable. But at least during this phase of training, you have the freedom to pack the appropriate amount of food and to get the amount of sleep that you can squeeze in while maintaining your tactical security. My overall assessment of this phase is that it separates the sheep from the wolves. Someone physically fit might be able to endure selection, but unless you're committed to becoming a warrior, you will never endure tactical training, hand-to-hand -hand combat training, and patrolling. Phase five is Robin Sage. It's currently a four week long unconventional training event. After being broken into teams of 15, you do a couple weeks of training at Camp McCall, and then you infiltrate the mountains and farmlands of North Carolina for a two week long field training exercise. My Robin Sage team was amazing. There was one other officer on the team. Brian was his name. He was such a great officer. We took turns being in charge, and I must say it was some of the best training I ever did. Physical fitness standards at Robin Sage are high. The rucks are very heavy. They're not heavy to be stupid. They're heavy because you have to carry everything you're going to need for two weeks of war on your backpack. Like all patrols, you need to keep security as number one. So sometimes this means that you don't get to sleep as much as you want, and for sure you have to ration your food. But on the other hand, there are also times when you get to really enjoy the fruits of your labor and your success. My overall assessment is that Robin Sage team training is where it all comes together. This is where you get to integrate medics, weapon specialists, engineers, commo specialists, and officers into an incredibly lethal and effective team in a very realistic wartime training scenario. Phase six is language training. Depending on if you speak a language or not, you will have to go to language school at Fort Bragg. Language school is 24 weeks. While you're in language school, you will have morning PT every day, but otherwise, your primary mission is to learn. There's almost no harassment and stupidity unless you bring it upon yourself. So as long as you're learning and pass the school, this is a very nice perk of being in Special Forces. Although it's not called Phase 7, many trainees will go directly into Advanced Skills Schools. These include Advanced Urban Combat Schools, Halo Training, Dive School, Mountaineer Training. At the end of all this training, you will graduate. Be allowed to wear the Special Forces tab on your uniform, authorized to wear a green beret, and then you'll head out and join your A-team. Everything you've done until then was just to get your foot in the door of a team room. Now is when the real training begins. Okay, there you have it. An executive summary of what to expect during the Special Forces Qualification Course. I hope you learned something new and are more prepared to begin the process of becoming a Special Forces soldier. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to keep learning and to forward this to a friend who needs to see this. Life is a special operation. Are you ready for it?